So root to assess your breathing, we use what's called a control pause and it gives you pretty good feedback of where you are in terms of your asthma. So let's go, it's a simple enough measurement, don't worry about what you get and I'll talk you through it. You're taking a normal silent breath in through your nose and a normal silent breath out through your nose and pinch your nose and hold. And we're simply timing it in seconds until you feel the first definite desire to breathe or the first involuntary movement of your breathing muscles. So keep just relaxing into the breath hold and keep monitoring when you feel the first definite desire to breathe. Now, when you let go, your breathing should be fairly normal. So it's important that you don't have to take a big breath at the end of it. So you're looking for two things, the first definite desire to breathe or the first involuntary movement of your breathing muscles. And that was about 23 seconds or so. And it's pretty good in fairness. Now, for somebody with asthma, we always say that this, the main symptoms are present up until the control pause is about 20 or even 25 seconds. So say, for example, somebody with coughing, wheezing, breathlessness, uh, somebody who's prone to colds and chest infections, somebody who would also have breathlessness during physical exercise. So from an asthma point of view, our objective is to build the control pause to increase it up to 25 seconds. Now the goal is 40, but even getting up to 25 seconds, we're making pretty good strides. If, for example, somebody has a control pause of say about 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 seconds, the breathing is typically faster, uh, the faster respiratory rate, they will be more likely to breathe up her chest, they will feel more likely that they're not getting enough air, they may have irregular breathing patterns, they may be mouth breathing, and it's this breathing pattern which is feeding into their asthma. So by practicing the exercises from the Buteco method, it helps to improve the controlled pause, breathing is becoming lighter, slower, lower through the nose, and this in turn helps to reduce the cycle in terms of mouth breathing, faster breathing, harder breathing, upper chest breathing, feeding into asthma symptoms. So it's not just an asthma. Because of the airway narrowing, we feel uncomfortable, we feel we're not getting enough air, it may be accompanied by symptoms such as wheezing, coughing, breathlessness, but that in turn then is feeding and changing our breathing patterns and our changed breathing patterns then is feeding back into our asthma. So that's what we want to recognize. And it's as simple as that. Does it make sense for somebody with asthma to be breathing in and out through an open mouth, taking cold, dry, unfiltered air directly into their lungs and cause the airways to narrow? Uh, there's enough theories out there in terms of moisture being sucked out of the airways, contributing to inflammation of the airways. This is when the inner wall of the airways are swelling. And also, if somebody with asthma has a habit of breathing harder and faster, it can cause a lowering of carbon dioxide from the blood through the lungs and this in turn then can cause the airways to constrict. And also, of course, with mouth breathing, we by bypass the nose, so it's always very important to keep the lips together, breathe in and out through the nose so that we harness nasal nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a natural bronchodilator. It helps to open up the airways. It helps to redistribute blood throughout the lungs. It's also antiviral. So, in a nutshell, with asthma, we want to breathe nose, we want to breathe light, in that our breathing is almost undetectable, that it's very soft, we want to be breathing slower, that we have a normal respiratory rate. And we want to breathe low, a good recruitment of the diaphragm. And of course, we want to breathe regular. And when we breathe that way, we naturally have a higher control pause. That's why the control pause is important in terms of giving us feedback. I'll always say to any person, any adult coming in with asthma, you will continue to have your symptoms until your control pause is a minimum of 20 seconds. And, you know, I'm talking about 20 seconds to 25 seconds, that little bit of a, a cushion there. And of course, the goal is 40 seconds, but let's get to 20 to 25 seconds.